Donald brought Carl D up the valley as he explained the signing, where he was soon offloaded by a crane. His driver and fireman and the manager were there. They all said goodbye and thank you to Donald. Then they lit Caldy's fire, and while waiting for steam, they looked him over carefully. A very good job, they said at last. Caldy sizzled happily. It's lovely to be at home, and in the steam again, he said. I'm longing to have a run with Catherine. Come on then, said his driver, and they trundled to the shed. Catherine was pleased to see him, and they went for a short run. I've had to go with Lord Harry lately, she said. He takes risks and frightens me. When I warn him, he laughs. Never mind, comforted Caldy. It'll be all right now. Later, he met two old friends. Ernest, number two, and Wilfred, number three. After some happy gossip, Caldy asked, Who is Lord Harry? He's one of the new engines, they said, who came while you were away. He's number six. Alaric and Eric are seven and eight. They're nice quiet engines. But old Harry's a terror. Next afternoon, Lord Harry rolled by with a reluctant coach on his way to the platform. Stupid things, he grumbled. They're all scared of coming with me. You're too reckless, said Caldy. That's why. Rubbish. I'm up to date, that's all. I can go twice your speed in perfect safety. All the same, we don't take such risks on mountain railways. There's no risk. Why, with my superheat? Oh. Interrupted Caldy. It's superheat, is it? I'd have said it was conceit myself. Lord Harry slotted furiously away. thinking what he'd say to Cal D next time they met. That's no danger, he boasted, storming up the final slope. That past of old ruin was talking nonsense. You moron! The telephone rang in the shed. And Caldy's crew were joined by the manager. Lord Harry's off at Summit, he said. We shall have to go and put things right. So they collected some workmen and the tool van and set out at once. Wilfred was there with his coach, unable to start his journey down. The passengers buzzed around Lord Harry like angry bees. He was feeling harassed. The manager pacified the passengers, while Cull D buffered up behind to take the strain when the men levered the engine's front wheels onto the rails. Wilfred, he called. Who is this wreck? It's Lord Harry, didn't you know? It looks like old Harry. It's fat as old Harry. But of course it can't be old Harry. 
I have a got. This the old Harry is an up-to-date engine. He can go twice our speed in perfect safety. Tee-hee-hee-hee-hee, <laughs> tittered the coaches. Lord Harry seethed in silence. They pushed Lord Harry out of the way and took the passengers home. Then Kaldi helped him back to the shed. No tails, said the manager sharply. It was your fault, and you know it. You upset our passengers and damaged yourself by taking risks. We cannot have that on our mountain railway. But, sir, that is enough. You will stay in the shed till we have decided what to do with you. He turned and walked sternly away. <laughs>